In and Zero is one of the most fun manga I'm reading right now, and I just love reading manga that know how to have fun. Really, this manga is good stuff. It's from the writer Fairy Tale, and it's similar in a lot of ways and different in others. We have a video on this channel about what Eden Zero does better than Fairy Tale. If you're interested, it's gonna be linked in the description, and you can also click on it at the end. But yeah, this manga is quite good. And one of the most interesting aspects of this soon to be anime is the freedom it has to tell almost any story it wants. I love One Piece, Naruto, Black Clover, you name it. But most of those shows are. I, I don't wanna say trap, but have certain set of rules that Eden Zero can break to some extent. Which is something that make it a pretty different ride in some ways. Which is what this video is about. What make Eden Zero a story that can go to places other show won't in terms of storytelling. Before we start this video, I just want to say that this video is made when there's around 100 chapters or so. So this video is not referring to the story as a whole. We never know, maybe this manga will end up with a lot of wasted potential. But as of the moment of this video, I think the manga is doing a pretty great job at utilizing its freedom in storytelling. So yeah, now let's get into it. There are two aspects that in my opinion make Eden Zero a shonen manga that has complete utter freedom to tell any type of story it wants to. First up, there's the world of Eden Zero. This story is set in a completely insane sci-fi world where the role of said world can change completely from a planet to the other. For those of you who don't know, the show is a adventure anime slash manga where you follow Shiki and his crew that are traveling through the entire cosmos in order to reach their goal, the mother of the universe. And to do so, they have to travel from planet to planet in order to reach said destination. Kinda like One Piece in some way. But even though One Piece had strange islands that have their own lore and feature which is great, Eden Zero being set in space and in a weird sci-fi setting make the potential of those planets almost endless. Since most shonen are set in one specific world, there's certain rule that said world cannot break. But in Eden Zero they travel from world to world, so each arc can break the rule previously established, which would make any adventure have its own sci-fi feel. Like there is a planet that is stuck in the past while the rest of the universe moved on, or one that is almost exactly like a RPG video game. Sure, there is the universal rule of the universe, like Ether being the source of most power, which is a good thing, because we need to understand the power of the character to truly get invested into the fight scene. And yeah, not every planet will be as weird, but it's fun to know that every places they visit can change the rule of the anime in some way, or can create a completely different story thematically speaking. With a world like that, the writer can take the hero anywhere he wants, and that's just awesome. And even when the show stays more standard, let's say, we still get to see the classic adventure show stuff with the world having their own lore and story like One Piece, which is always fun to see. But like I said, what's awesome with the adventure space sci-fi story the show has comes from its setting that allowed the maximum amount of freedom a shonen writer could wish for. You can literally tell any story you want without worrying about how to integrate it into your world or worrying about jumping the shark. And I'm ready for any adventure awaiting us in the future. But the other aspect that gives this show so much freedom is where I get the most fun out of the possibility the show has. Alright, there's a heavy spoiler here. But I think it can be something that will push you to watch the show if you're not interested yet. But if you want to try the show without spoiler, maybe click out of the video. Okay, so here we go. At a certain point, the main character are facing an opponent that is uh, just simply better and stronger than them. And he captured the good guy, take his gun, put it to the forehead of the protagonist, and shoot him right through the head. A bad guy freaking killed the main character. But hear me out here, a certain character learned the ability to time travel and with that try to save the main character, ReZero style. I know that for some people it might seem like, okay, so now they have the ultimate plot armor. But that couldn't be further from the truth. First of all, time travel has consequences on the timeline. But also, obviously, if you watch ReZero, you know that sometime if you fix something, you can break something else. And this is what let the show have an insane amount of freedom. The writer can tell any type of story, even one that would be too dark and grim for a shonen. Like a hero losing and dying. Sure, they will come back with time travel, but there's a risk that come with it. And sure, it's some kind of plot armor to some extent, but one with consequences and the potential to tell amazing story. Okay, does Luffy or Goku or Naruto have a plot armor? The answer is yes, they can't die. Sure, they can lose, but honestly, if I was watching Naruto and during the pain arc, Naruto would get killed, I probably would have dropped the show. 
I mean big shonen tell long stories, so the longer a story get, the more we want to see the main character reach their goal, so killing them off would be stupid for the writers, so they can't die. If you think about it, in a way shonen protagonists, like a lot of protagonists from most story, already have a plot armor that prevent them to die, but NN0 use this plot armor in a way that can enhance the story. Sure, they probably won't lose for good like any shonen main character, but the story can take twist and turn no other shonen would dare to take. And giving this armor a big flaw like the butterfly effect of time travel make this aspect of the show so damn intriguing to me. Think about it, it's a show that can tell any story it wants. If they want to kill a main character, they can. It's basically a shonen that can pull a re-zero anytime it wants. Now with time travel, if a character fights someone is stronger than them, they can legit get killed off. When you watch a fight and the main villain is way stronger than the hero, the thought in your head of oh this hero is gonna win or he's gonna get saved obviously or he's gonna transform, change. Cause you know that there is a possibility of the character just dying. Anything can happen to the character and that is true freedom. Personally, I love time travel when it's used right, and I think in that case, making a long-running shonen with this aspect in mind can be a game-changer. Now, if you take the fluid nature of the world of Eden Zero and mix it with the time travel aspect, you get a truly unpredictable story that can enhance its storytelling from this freedom. And the way Hero writes his manga by making every chapter as fun as he can, I think those story elements will help him make an amazingly fun story for those who like his work. Honestly, I look forward to the future of Eden Zero, and I hope you do as well. Will the story stay as fun as it is now? Only time will tell. But as someone who really enjoyed his previous work, I can at least say that I'm on board for the ride. I can't wait to see what's next for the shonen with total freedom. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and go check out our other stuff. We have some cool stuff on the channel. Anyway, peace out.